We have close to around 75 uh, salient information which the school showcases on our thing. They can uh, they also showcase close to around 15 plus images and videos and around 50 plus uh, sports and extracurricular. This is as such a very robust platform which will as such help a lot of parents to decide which is the right school for them. So this is basically the parent login where they just log in through a user ID and password, which they can create on their own. And they have the privilege to, I'll just take one school as such. So they have the privilege to uh, get into any one of the school and see all the features, what is available. So uh, right from the uh, admission, their curriculum, their basic information, their fee structure. So if you see here, so it showcases the board, it showcases what kind of, uh, uh, are they co-ed or are they exclusively for the girls or boys, their fee structure, the overview about the school is given here. Okay, the schools can showcase their gallery, which will as such help in parents uh, getting to know how is the platform, what are the extracurricular activities they do, what are the results they get, all these things. And if you just scroll down, They get to know the uh, sports activities which are available in the school. It can be indoor or outdoor. What are the co-curricular co activities? The reviews as to in various areas like the infrastructure, the academics, sports, and all these areas. So it is as such a very exhaustive information which you get it on this platform. So this is something small about the uh, platform. So I would not take much time because uh, I guess... Uh, Deepa has a lot of information to share with us. So I will leave the platform to Ms. Deepa. Uh, all to you, Deepa. You can start off. Yes, I'll thank just you, stop sharing my screen. Yeah. And over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Kishan. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening, all of you. A very warm welcome to you on to this platform. And uh, thank you, schools uh, team, for uh, you know providing me this opportunity to uh, take uh, you know, the young parents today you know, as to how to spend their time with the children uh, post school hours, uh, you know, be it uh, you know, pre-primary or primary. So spending time with your uh, children once they come back home, you know, how, how are you going to spend time is something which is very important. Okay. So I will be you know, starting off with this uh, you know, very famous quote uh, which says that, you know, when you make a decision to have a child, you're also making the decision to take uh, the responsibility for that child. You don't abandon your obligation as a parent because you have other plans. So just because, you know, you're busy uh, with, you know, some other plans uh, with in, in your life, that doesn't mean that, you know, the child has to be neglected. And one thing which I would want to make, you know, uh, it very uh, clear to all of you is it's not just enough that you send your child to the school and, uh, you know, just forget and, uh, you know, let the child, uh, you know, grow on its own. You know, it, it doesn't happen like that. When we talk about schooling, it is absolutely the school, the teacher, the parent and, the you know, uh, the child who is on priority. So for me being a teacher, uh, you know, uh, personally, I all those experiences which I have, uh, you know, come across, I would just want to, uh, you know, uh, tell you all those and just have a small discussion with that, you know, just telling you on to it. But the only thing is, yes, uh, sadly, uh, I will not be able to see you. But yes, since you are seeing me, that's a very, uh, you know, different uh, aspect of this. So uh, I would just be taking you through as to what is, how is it, you know, important for you to, you know, take uh, take the you know control of your child after coming back from home. When I say control, it is absolutely a different uh, you know term being used here. So you might be working, or you know you might not be you know working. Parents, both of you, some of you uh, you know might be you know mothers working, fathers at home, or fathers working, mother at home, working from home. You know due to this pandemic, there has been a huge 
uh, you know, change in our life which is coming. But yes, education and learning should never pause. That's the only thing which we always, uh, you know, take. we at, uh, you know, Little Millennium RM, we, we have not paused the learning at all. Parents have come forward to, you know, just get the learning through the on, online uh, platform too. So irrespective of whether, you know, the, both the parents are working or not, you should always provide the child with this basic right that is, you know, right to education. I would feel that, yes, the learning is very, very important. Once the child, you know, you drop the child to the school, you know, uh, telling bye to the child and, you know, assuring that, yes, he or she is going to be happy in the school, selecting the right kind of school for your child and, you know, continuing with the child's learning is you know, very important. Once you send the child, uh, you know, once you take an admission to the school, what happens? There is, you know, there is a lot of uh, stages which you go through. One amongst that is, you know, you need to know what the school, how does the school function? What are all the set rules, you know, and regulations, which actually facilitates the child to settle down. So only when the parents are going to understand what the rules are and going to follow the rules and regulations, then only the child will be able to settle down. Because without parents and without the teachers around and the school, the child individually will not be able to perform. All right. So this is something which I would want to emphasize on. So please, first, you need to understand what are all the rules which are set where, you know, there is a small handbook which is given. The moment you take an admission in any of the school, they'll have the parent handbook which says, these are all the terms, you know, these are all the rules which have to be, you know, followed on a day-to-day -day basis where there is a lot of schedule activities, everything given to you so that you are well in advance aware as to what is going to happen for the entire session. Okay, so once these things are, you know, done in the school, first thing what I would want to tell you is, for the child to come back to school in the morning fresh, the child has to go to bed early. For this, I think, you know, the parents have to start, you know, putting the child to bed early so that the child wakes up in the morning fresh to come to school and on time being punctual. Okay, so this is number one, which you will have to be very, very clear about putting your child to bed on time and waking up your child on time so that you know your child has enough time to breathe in the morning to just get ready to go to school. Once the child reaches the school, that becomes the school's responsibility of taking the child through as to how is the activity is going to be conducted, where are the uh, you know help or support needed by the parents as and when it is required, the schools you know approach you. Okay. Now, when I would want to ask you the you know, question as to what are, do you think these little ones, especially the uh, you know, children aged between two to six years are capable of taking up responsibilities? When I ask you this question, you know, it is yes, they are capable of taking responsibilities. So how do we make them take responsibilities for their you know, little life? It's, very small steps which grow up to be, you know, really, which is going to do wonders for, uh, you know, when they grow up and the children grow up. So first thing, as I told you, the you know parent handbook, which you take and you go through and just stick on to those rules and regulations, uh, which has been given by the school, follow so that everything is the, the uh, you know, the schooling of the child functions smoothly. Okay. And Whenever you have, you need to attend all the parent-teacher meetings, whichever is, you know, whenever the school asks for it. That's very, very important. That is the way you connect with the schools with the parent-teacher meeting. Okay, whenever there is a schedule which comes to you, well in advance, I feel that yes, the schedule and the activity, the make a list of that particular activities for that whole month. And, you know, you can put it up on the refrigerator with the magnet fixed. In capital letters so that you know your child also can start reading initially your child might come to you pull you up to the refrigerator and say that uh, mama papa what is this tell me tell me so initially you will have to read it out saying it on this day this particular day this is what is going to be done in school so we need to be well in advance prepared for it so the child is mentally prepared saying that yes this is what is going to happen and the child looks forward to have a beautiful experience for the whole month because if every school, what I feel till primary, you know, has everything thematically taught to, uh, taught to them. 
Okay. So this is something which you will have to make a note of it and see to it that it is put up on the refrigerator or any place wherever on the study, you know, the workplace, wherever you feel it is uh, convenient for the child as well as you so that it doesn't skip your mind. Stay connected with the school with all these activities and schedule for the month. Okay. And whenever we say that there are activities, I tend to see that, you know, whenever the child is asked for the, you know, materials to be uh, brought to school, 25% of the uh, you know, strength in the class uh, ends up in the school not getting any materials. How, why does this happen? This happens because of the parents. Why? Because the parents have not provided it, even though the school has you know, uh, brought it to the parents' notice much in advance, but the parents, because of their work, it has you know, skipped their mind so that you, the child enters the school without the materials. When the child does all the activity, when the child sees the other friends, other students doing the activities in the class and the child is left out, that's a huge loss. The child feels left out. The child feels left out. So please mark these saying that they're very important. The materials which have been asked by the school which has to be provided by the parents, you have to make a note of it beforehand and see to it that they are provided. It's not that, you know, when the father is coming back from office or mother is coming back from the office, either the fa father calls up or the mother calls up and says that, uh, you know, hey, this is what uh, is needed from, you know, uh, from the school, this thing, the requirement. So please, when you come home, you please get it. No, I would not suggest this. I would suggest that you would, you know, take that half an hour of your time Take your child along with you to the shop and let your child feel, touch, and see what the materials are. That is going to be a pre-preparation for the activity beforehand. So you need to take the child along and you know just try to buy all those uh, you know materials which have been asked by the school, so that the child well in advance is aware as to what is being done. Pre you need to prepare your child before the child goes to school the next day as to this is what is going to happen and this is what is being done in the school for that particular day. The child is much aware and trust me, the child doesn't refuse to get up in the morning and it would be the other way. The child would have, you know, woken you up for the day and saying that mommy, papa, get up. I need to go to school. I need to reach school much, in a, you know, much early today because that is going to be the surprise, uh, you know, that is going to be the, uh, you know, what I would want to say is that is going to be something uh, exciting for the child to go and see as to what exactly is going to happen with those materials, which are very, very important. Okay. Once the child comes back home, these, you know, these are the responsibilities from the child with, through you, which can be fulfilled. So you will have to see to it that your child is capable of taking, you know, through these responsibilities to make the learning much better. Okay, so when you buy everything, keeping it, ask your child to pack the bag before night and, you know, keep everything ready in the bag. It should not happen that in the morning, you know, you tend to, the child is not well or you are one of the parent is not well and you tend to wake up late and the child reaches the school without, you know, some of the books inside. The same way as I told with the materials, the same thing happens with the book also. So if one of the book is missing, the child is left out in the class again. So it is very important that you make, train your child to pack the bag previous night, keep everything in the bag, show your child where it is kept. Mothers or fathers should not do it because the child will start searching when the child reaches the school. So the child should not be searching, the child should be made to keep. Give one one thing to your child. You can pass it on to the child and the child can put it inside the bag. You can always reorganize it to make the bag, you know, a bit presentable. Otherwise, it has to be the work of the child only to do it. Trust me, you must be thinking that, is my child two year old able to do it? You're, you do it with your two, two years and three, uh, three year olds just for two months and you see the wonder happening. Third month onwards, you know, your child will start reminding you that, yes, these are the things to be kept in the bag. Yeah, this is very important. This should happen before the child goes to bed. Very, very important. Now, whenever I see that, you know, the child, especially this tend to happen more with the parents where both of them are working. You come home late, uh, say by around 7, 7.30, and your child is, you know, in the daycare or in the, you know, uh, under the hands of the grandparents, uncles, aunt, might be anything. 
So once you reach home, the entire frustration for the whole day is taken out on you when you reach back home. So how do you handle this? How do you handle such you know, frustration which comes from the child. The child, you know, starts unreasonably asking you that I want this, I want that you take me out, I want to buy this, I want to. There is no limit for this in being, because, you know, the child every day has made up its mind that yes, tomorrow, when my mom or dad comes back from office, I need to ask this, I need to ask this, I have a list of these things. This, I would say, is a way we are going to spoil the child. So other way, the child can be rewarded saying that, yes, I heard that you were a good, uh, you know, uh, boy or girl today. And, you know, uh, Dadu, Dadi said me this, Nanu Nani told me that you were good. Ajitata told me that you were very good today and you did all your work on your own. You know, appreciating the child and trying to spend time with them and understand what did they do after coming back from school is something which is very important. So when you sit and talk over, you know, don't think that they are very small and they will not be able to share, uh, you know, their day with you. They will be able to do it in their own pace, in their own way. You will be able to understand as to what did they do for the whole day till the time you reached. There is one way when you say that, yes, you need to, uh, you know, you need to recognize what the child has done, all the good things, appreciate and reward it. Reward need not be with things. What I have seen with many of the parents nowadays, since you cannot give the time, you have a sort of guilt in your mind that I'm not able to give time to my child. So let me buy this. Let me buy that. Okay, my son had asked me this. So let me buy this. It's not needed. The rewards cannot be always with, you know, those things which can be uh, you know, bought always and which can be, you know, kept with the child, uh, you know, you know, which can be very different. One more way of, you know, doing it, what I would want to suggest is you can always give this with the, uh, with the help of the geological, uh, uh, geographical location also. Means what I mean to say is, uh, you know, you can always have these rewards through, you know, taking them out for a visit during the weekend. Uh, for example, on a Wednesday, you feel that, yes, your child has done something very good where you need to, you know, reward your child. You can always say that, yes, let's get up early on a Saturday and I'm going to drive you to this place and let's go to this place and you will have a look at this. It might be a botanical garden. It might be a zoo. It might be a, uh, you know, what do you say, desert if you're somewhere nearby or it can be, you know, a waterfall. It can be a park. It can be a forest. It can be, you know, anything which mountains where you go to the hills and you know show them what it is very close to the nature which is very 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 important i would say that this is very important okay so these uh, you can be when you when you see you know you stay somewhere nearby to a beach you can always say that yes you will take them to a take him or her to a beach on that particular day so your rewards can be in any of these which helps uh, for you know them to connect when they move forward towards understanding what is uh, you know the geography and which gives them a lot of uh, you know interest also in understanding as to what it is and they will start listening to you and they get automatically disciplined you need not raise your hands you need not raise your voice to discipline them always remember parents raising hands or raising your voice is very easy for you once you come back from your job or if, you know, the mothers are not, uh, you know, are the homemakers, uh, they also would have worked really hard for the whole day and they also would have been frustrated towards the end of the day. But please remember that, you know, the words which you use and the actions which you show, you are going to be a role model to the children. And trust me, they are going to remember this particular thing even when they are 18, 20, 22 years old. All, if you have done four good things, you know, to them, and there was one day where, you know, once you shouted or you raised your hand, you know, or you have done something else to them, that is the, they forget all the other four good things, what you have told about them, but they remember that one thing which you did, which it was absolutely not pleasant to the child. So don't get into a situation where, you know, you will raise your hand or raise your voice to, you know, discipline them. There are various ways where you can discipline them. But the only thing is, yes, you need to have enormous patience with the children. That's very, very important. 
very important. Okay, so this is something which is uh, which was one of the point which was very important where you would have to understand that yes, this is how it works, and not shouting or you know beating them up works. Yes. And uh, with, as I told you, with the rewards, which can be in different uh, things, and you need to identify your child's interest and hobbies. One month, it can be a dance. The other month can be a music. Other month can be a musical instrument and drawing, painting. Don't get confused saying that you've already paid the fees for this particular class. It might be Zumba. It might be yoga. You have to keep, uh, you know, uh, putting them into different classes where you will have to understand as to where exactly their interest, you know, uh, where, where, where are they going to show that interest to you. So don't feel that it is going to be a waste of money and time from your side. One month, if they have liked this particular thing, the next month you can take them to a different place where they, you know, try to understand what exactly they are interested in. So it will definitely take time for them to identify and for you to identify which is that particular area which they are, which your child, which your child is going to be, you know, uh, you know, which is going to be enjoying as a hobby and the interest. So please take time out after school hours to just take them through this. There are some schools which will have all these co-curricular activities, but there will be few schools where they will be absolutely academically oriented, where you would have chosen that, yes, we want this, the extracurricular we will manage. So that way to balance it out, please understand that if it is not a part of the school, you need to make time on weekends at least or twice a uh, you know, weekday where you just take them out and get this uh, you know, hobby or interest of theirs, uh, which is there within them come out successfully. That's very important. That's very important. Yeah. So these are the points which I would say that yes, which is very important for the uh, you know uh, post school hours, which you have to spend time and trying to understand, sitting with their homework, reading time. When I say homework, it should be very you know which it, it, it should be very pleasant. You should not force the child to complete the homework within that uh, you know stipulated time. If the child for that particular day is not prepared to do it, please. You know, you can just talk it out with your child and say that, yes, let's wake up early in the morning tomorrow and you will have to do something, whatever I've told you, with these interests of the child to make, to see to it that the child does it at least tomorrow morning before going to the school. Reading time, bedtime stories, these are very, very important. Don't think that, you know, reading out to them, they are not understanding anything. Reading time is something which is very, very important because they develop on their listening skills and they develop on their vocabulary skills also. You will not even be knowing as to what are all the words which they have picked up, but trust me, they would have picked up at least five, minimum five words on that particular day when you start reading it out to the children. So bedtime story and evening when you have time or in the morning before going to school, giving them bath, bath time, feeding time, you can just read out a story to them. Reading out stories is the best thing to, you know, keep them focused in what they are doing. So read out stories every day, sing rhymes along with them, jump, play along with them. You need to take the time out and not feel that, oh, well, you know, of how am I going to, uh, you know, uh, spend time with my child today after going back uh, from office? I'm so tired, how am I going to do? But understand one thing that your child would be waiting for you for the whole day, for you to come and you know just spend that uh, time with them. Keep smiling, laughing, playing. There is a lot of things which the child learns while playing. You have to remember that. There is a lot of things which the child learns while playing. Playing is the most important part of learning. So the more the child plays, the more the child reads, the more the child listens, the faster the child is going to speak. Most of you parents, you always come to the school and keep asking that, uh, you know, ma'am, why is why doesn't my child talk? The other child talks. You know, you need to understand that it is clearly, you know, the science, the research says that it is going to be the listening skills which is going to be absorbed by the child first, and the child listens more when the child is a baby. The child is going to speak. After speaking, it is reading which follows, and the last comes writing. Okay, we call it as LSRW. The more the child listens, the more the child will, the faster the child starts speaking. The child starts speaking, the child starts reading. The child starts reading, the child starts writing. 
so writing comes the last and listening comes at the first okay so the reading is very very important reading is very important so you have to read it out to the child for you know that age group so if your child is going to be 2 year old the child definitely doesn't understand many of the words so it can be a picture reading pick up a small picture cut out from the newspaper magazine or somewhere and just show what is happening let the child you know tell the story to you in its own language you can narrate the story in your own language but when it when the child goes up to 4 years the child will be able to read it has to be two lines in a story book with more of pictures don't pick up those story books which has many pages this thick book with you know very less of pictures but more of you know the write up onto it no that's not the right way of picking up the book when you have to pick up the book from the library or from the counter in the bookshop you need to understand that it has to be age group and nowadays it's all the age is actually mentioned at the you know on the front page of the book or at the end of the book so just pick up whatever is you know good for your child so that it helps you these are all the things which you have to you know keep in your mind when you have your uh, time out after the child comes back from the school looking forward to spend time till the time the child goes back to the school the next day always remember that school is an extension of home and home is an extension of school they are interrelated they should always be connected there is a disconnect then there is going to be a learning development uh, you know there is going to be a problem in the learning development in the child but one thing which you have to you know listen understand deepa uh, okay uh, i would probably like to know uh, if, in respect to the situation as of now now that the school and the uh, uh, post school as everything is happening at home only so what do you suggest that how do the how do parents can as such handle this uh, kind of situation the thing is yes kishan i would you know want to tell the parents that i would feel that yes it's a boon i would see i would you know feel that yes it's a boon actually you know where parents are working from home and they have their children along with them but yes sometimes it becomes a little uh, uh, you know a strainness for the parents so that you know they will not be able to figure it out as to how to you know uh, complete their work for the day and how do they make the children complete their work for the day because there will be you know the mother might be taking a call in one room the father must be taking a call in one room where they have you know two children where both of them will be having their online classes going on so what i would say is you know the learning at the end of the day should not be paused as, as i told you beforehand so even whether it is an online platform or when they are going to come to offline the schedule is the same and the uh, you know procedure is the same the only thing is yes they are missing the school uh you know in the physical way so that uh, you know they would come to school and you know spend some time and go back but with this parents trust me a little bit more of patience we have come a long way now i think it's you know we are almost towards the end of it uh, you know where we would just be waiting for the schools to reopen now till then have the patience whatever you were having and try to see to it the only thing what you need to focus is how is your child going to get facilitated with this particular uh you know uh, learning which is happening online let it be teams let it be google meet let it be uh, zoom whatever it is but what is the at the end of the day what is the child learning whether the child is capable of going to the next class what is what are the you know milestone which the child has achieved is what is more important okay great thanks uh, we have a question coming in which says uh, i have two kids elder one is 6 years and the little one is 1 year i am work i am working as a software engineer now since it's online class it becomes too hectic to manage kids and work i am feeling really hard to control our temper <laughs> i understand i understand sajita as i told you that you know it is not easy for the whole day managing you know the home and the work as well as the kids uh you know to keep them on the track so that is what i'm telling you when you have this online classes on to it you just have to be prepared with the online class totally uh, you know where you say that yes you have a little one year old where you know uh, he or she will be uh, you know taking more of your time on to it but your elder one you can always you know tell the elder one make your elder one responsible for all the 
you know chores for the day which you want your little one your little one your uh, elder child will be a uh, you know role model for your younger one so even though he or she must not might not be watching you or your elder one doing it but trust me you are going to be the role model for your child for your one year old where he, he will con- he or she will be continuously watching you observing you so you need to make your elder one more responsible all those responsibilities of the child where they are capable of taking it you can just make a note of it and start making your 6 year old more independent so that your workload gets a little less with your 1 year old that is how you can manage yeah temper is something which you have to you know control because it's not to if not today in future you will definitely repent for uh, you know losing out on your temper and trying to be a bit uh, you know root to the child because they are at the end of the day very small they don't understand what is happening we can at least express what is happening we can talk it out and you know we have our friends we just take a call you know we just try to take the phone and speak to each other we are on the social media all those things but just imagine the 6 year and 1 year old they don't even know what's happening around so we need to be the you know support system for them yeah sanjita yeah. and okay. i'm sure that uh, temper is one uh, big word which will revolve for all the preschool teachers because handling yes. so many children that's yes. really a big word <laughs> very important especially they say that you know from 2 to 6 years are the formative years they are called as the early childhood so you need to be very very careful with them you know when you are handling them when you are managing them it's just a phase those Correct. tough phase will be there for some time and it just passes on don't worry just try to have your own for that you need to be at peace so you need to have time for yourself you need to have space for yourself so you need to probably you know wake up a little early in the morning have your time and you have to keep your uh, you know a mood in good uh, you know swing on to it that's very important okay yeah? i have vinay who is asking as movies versus play uh, with the kid what do you prefer is what he asked yeah when there are two different things movies and play they have two different thing you know play is different and movies are different what i would suggest is the more the child plays the more the child will be learning as to what it is from that particular thing you can have a time table now since everything is down and you know the schools are closed and uh, you know the places are all closed so what you can do is probably you can maintain a time table where you tell your child that yes this is going to be your uh, study time this is your play time after you finish you're going to be good it's going to be a movie time for you for some time but please remember the screen time should not be more should not be more than uh, you know probably in this pandemic it can be not more than 1 hour max to max is 1 and 1/2 hours you know out of 24 hours so everything is important when it comes to movies again you you need to choose what sort of a movie it should not be a you know aggressive movie where there is a lot of fighting which happens with all those guns and those things no the, those will not help again the movie should be very very you know carefully chosen for your kid okay great so deepa we have another question uh, by miss smriti asking how much time is optimum uh, time to be invested in kids uh, by both the parents uh there cannot be anything you know <laughs> so this is something see what happens is i always believe that you know when, when as in when the uh, you know child is uh, demanding for your time you can always sit and you know tell your child that yes this time is going to be your office time you will definitely connect with your child the moment your time is done so please remember that if you have committed to your child saying that yes you will sit with your child play watch a movie or uh, you know go for a stroll go for a drive whatever it might be you should not go back come what may that is the time you do it for three four times in a week your child will understand that yes it is mummy papa's time now for their office work and after this they will definitely connect with you so it can be you know sometimes the mother pitching in sometimes the father pitching in so you know it, it should be that perfect balance bottom line you should see to it that the commitment which you do for your child should remain and you should not go back with that commitment little time i don't talk about you know quantity of you know quantity time it's always the quality time which is more important so even if you are going to spend 10 minutes with your child wholeheartedly and your child is going to be happy with it your child is going to remember 
trust me that 10 minutes of the time which you give your child is very, very important. Connect to the fullest. Connect to the fullest. Okay. So I have another person uh, who has pinged me on my uh, window. Uh, they say that now that there are too many courses which are all around, what do you feel is the right age to put them into? Uh, something like uh, they've come up with uh, uh, coding classes and all these things. So what do you okay. feel would be the right age uh, when they're in preschool? There are such come up with a lot of uh, courses is what he says. Yes, whenever these courses come, you know, the places where you are going to, where they are, uh, you know, conducting such courses, it will be clearly mentioned as to what is the age group where your child can get into that particular course. Okay, so, you know, most of the times these age groups which are given by the academies are very true. Sometimes what happens, you know, your uh, child might be a little fast, might be a little early, must have, you know, uh, must have, uh, you know, achieved that milestone a little early. That's okay. You can always talk it out with the academy and say that, you know, is this coding class okay with my child? They'll have a lot of, uh, you know, assessment which they do before they do, before they take in your child into uh, the, uh, you know, academy and trying to understand what exactly suits your child onto it. So that's given now. It's not like those days where, you know, you blindly go take and, you know, you just waste your time and money onto it and you come back without anything happening. So most of these academies, they are, they, they have the age, uh, you know, group given mentioned in it very clearly, but sometimes it can be plus or minus. That's okay. You can try it out. There's nothing wrong in trying it out. Sometimes we say that, yes, uh, you know, Zumba is only for uh, four years and above. But now there are a lot of things which are coming up age related also. According to that age, particular age group, you know, things are uh, being taught. Okay. And we have an, uh, one last question, I guess. Uh, what would be the approximate time which we can give children for the play once they are put into the school? Because they uh, they they say that they tend to play if they if left they'll play the whole day. So what do you play, uh, feel would be the I mean any approximate timing which we can give these many numbers of plays? What they're asking? Yeah, the thing is, you know, whenever the child comes back from the school, the child needs a bit of time for you know himself or herself so if the child is used to going to bed, you know going to sleep in the afternoon for some time your child has to be put to sleep and the child wakes up that is the time when you will have to tell your child i would uh, you know suggest saying that you finish off with the homework whatever you have finish with your studies for that particular day and you know once you do this the play should follow the academics because they look forward to that play so you need to have a timetable fixed for yourself saying that this is what it is. Take a you know, chart paper out and try to make the days and you know, split it into timings where you just see that uh, this is what is going to be done by your child for this particular time. So the moment, the post uh, you know, noon, what you can do is the moment the child wakes up or if the child is not into a habit of sleeping, you can always tell your child to finish off the you know, homework onto it and whatever revision, the recapitulation which has to be done for the day can be done at that particular time. And then your child can go out to play and you need to tell that, yes, this is the time you need to get back. So initially your child might not come back, uh, you know, of, uh, at that time, what you say, or you, your child might you know, trouble you in bringing you back. You need to make your child understand that, yes, this is, it is time now to go back. And immediately after they go back, let there be you know, 15 minutes or 20 minutes of something which they look forward to go back home. Let there be an activity, you know, probably a TV time or a, a, you know, cooking time along with the parents, helping you out in the kitchen. They look forward to it. So these are the things which you can always tell that, yes, chalo, chalo, we need to go now. Let's, uh, you know, uh, the, those things are waiting at home. So you need to make every time, every part of your timetable interesting. That's very important. That's very important. Okay. So uh, we're done, Deepa. I, mean, I guess that was the last question. Uh, any more questions, uh, participants? In case if you have, you can... Uh, Ask if uh, Deepa would be more than happy to answer any number of questions. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay. The only Great thing is, one. yes, I, do you I, all agree with the things what have been told? You know, that is something which I would want to know. Has it actually made sense to you all where, yes, you need to spend this kind of money, you know, time with your uh, child where uh, after coming back from school and how are you supposed to be connected with the school, you know? Do you feel that this is really important, parents? Yes, we are getting a lot of yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Great. Uh, done. Uh, thanks, Deepa. That was really wonderful. Uh, in fact, it was really very good that you gave us a insight about uh, what has to be done pre and post the preschool hours. I'm sure that most of the parents here uh, would start, uh, I mean, imbibing those things for their children accordingly and uh, would we'll look forward for more such sessions from you uh, on our school's platform. And uh, in any case, people want to get in touch with uh, any of the information uh, about the school, what uh, Deepa runs, you can log into the school's platform and you can uh, go ahead with the information which is available. Okay. The phone numbers, everything are available. You can get in touch with me with whatever questions, all of your queries. Sometimes after the session, there might be some questions which might have popped up. So you can always get in touch. No worries. Yeah. Okay. Any time, Kishan. Thank you Done. so much. Thanks a lot, Deepa. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you okay. so much. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for all the attendees who have attended. And Thank thanks, you, Harish, parents. for the Thank technical you. support. Okay. Done. Have a good Thank day, you. everyone. Yeah. Thank you.